So for this last video of review for exam three for physics 221, I'd like to talk about the effect of magnetic fields on charges. So if you have a charge here, positive or negative, stationary, and you have a magnetic field in this direction, and the charge is stationary, it's going to have no effect. Magnetic field is going to have no effect on the charge if charge is stationary. The only time the magnetic field is going to have an effect on the charge is if the charge is moving and some component of the charge is moving perpendicular to the magnetic field. If the charge is moving parallel to the magnetic field, again, the magnetic field is not going to have an effect on the charge. Very interesting observation, very odd perhaps when you look at that, because if you compare it to an electric field, an electric field in a charge, in a, I'm sorry, a charge in an electric field will be accelerated. I just want to maybe state that this for review too. In electric field, if you have a charge here, that charge is going to feel a force. The force that that charge is going to feel is going to be equal to Q times the size of the electric field. And that force is going to be in the direction of the electric field if it's a positive charge and opposite that direction if it's a negative charge. So if the charge were positive, it would experience a force that way. And if it were negative, it would experience a force in the opposite direction. Okay? Now that force, which you could again calculate by taking the size of the charge, multiplying it by the strength of the electric field, that would give you a force in newtons. If you take that force and you want to know what it's going to do to the charge, it's going to cause the charge to accelerate. That acceleration is going to be equal to the force that the charge experiences divided by the mass in which the charge is located. This is just Newton's third law, and it applies here just like it did in the first semester class that we talked about in Physics 220. All right, so that's the effect of a charge in an electric field. Now, in a magnetic field, it's the, the equation for the force that the charge experiences is a little bit different. It, the, remember, the velocity is going to affect how big the force is. So the force is Q times V times B, where... V and B are perpendicular to one another. So if you have a component of the, so if you have a magnetic field like this, and the charge is moving like that, you, you would say, well, they're not perpendicular, but there is a perpendicular component to the velocity there. And so that would be the force the charge would, would experience would be associated with a component of velocity that's perpendicular to the, to the magnetic field. But in this class, we're just going to be sticking to where it's perpendicular, just to keep things simple and straightforward. <clears throat> so that is the force there, and what's th that's the size of it. What's the direction of it? What's the direction of the force? And this is where we spent more time. This is where we use the right-hand rule to determine the direction of the force that a charge experiences when it's moving with a component of its velocity perpendicular to the magnetic field. And... We, we use the right-hand rule, and what I said was this. I said, okay, if I, if I had a magnetic field, let's say this way, it's best to do it by example, I think. And if I have a charge moving, uh, positive charge, let's say, moving this way. So what I would do is I would put my, ah, pick the difficult orientation to show, but I put my fingers in the direction of the motion of the charged particle, bend them in the direction of the magnetic field, and my thumb points in the direction of the force that the charge is going to experience. So in this case, it's into the page. So I would write that like that, into the page, so you see the tail of the arrow of the force vector that the charge is experiencing. If the charge happened to be negative, it would be the opposite direction. So for a negative charge moving this way, then I'd use the right-hand rule, but then I'd flip my result, and it would be a force directed out of the page. So you can apply this for whatever orientation of charge, motion, and magnetic field direction that you have to determine the force that a positive or a negative charge would experience. Then we took that and we did it, we dealt with it with parallel wires. So if you have wires with currents going through them, we treated, and this was just in the last video, so I don't want to go into too much depth on this here, but we talked about if the currents were in the same direction, the result is that there would be an attractive force between them. And if they were in opposite directions, there would be a repulsive force between uh, associated with the two 
magnetic fields acting on the wires. And I demonstrated that by treating the wires with current flowing through them as charges moving up or down and in the presence of the magnetic field created by the other wire. So take a look at that last video, which is uh, just in the same folder here, and you can review that. The la very last thing we talked about is if you have uh, a force on a charge that's in a region of magnetic field, and I'll draw a region here. Let's say a magnetic field coming out at you here. And you have a positive charge that's moving with some velocity in this magnetic field as a positive charge, so I'll draw it like that. What's going to happen to that charge? Well, it's going to feel a force, and we know what direction the force it's going to experience based on the right-hand rule. Put our fingers in the direction of the motion of the charge, and then bend them in the direction of the magnetic field, and that charge is going to feel a force downward. So it's going to experience a downward force here. But as it experiences that downward force, it's going to cause the charge's motion to turn, and it's going to keep experiencing a force that's perpendicular to the direction of its motion, which results in a circular path that this charge is going to follow. And so we came up with the radius of that circular path, and we said that the radius is equal to um, mv over qb. The bigger the mass of the charge, charged object, the bigger the radius, the faster it's moving, the bigger the radius, the stronger the magnetic field, the smaller the radius, and the bigger the charge, the smaller the radius, because it's going to be experience a bigger centripetal force in that case. And uh, if it's a positive charge, of course, it'll move this way. If it's a negative charge, it would move the other way. And so this gives us a way to break apart materials based upon the size, the charge, and to basically sort materials out based upon their properties, their, the particle masses, the particle charges. And this is the basis for the mass spectrometer, which allows us to separate materials and to determine what is in a sample. And many of you have used it, probably in a different class. That is all the content we've talked about thus far. So you can take the midterm as soon as you feel prepared up through Sunday night. Good luck.